belong, become, believe. You're listening to Grace Church of Northwest Arkansas podcast. The message for June 5th, 2022 is called As If. The speaker is John Ray and the location is Mount Sequoia, Fayetteville, Arkansas. Good morning, everyone. My name is John Ray. Welcome to Grace Church of Northwest Arkansas. Um, When I was a kid, there was this toy called the Visible Man. Now, you got to be old like me. You probably haven't seen this. I don't I don't think it was a very popular toy even back in the day, but it was a model of sorts. It was the same size, kind of a 12 inch figure, the same size as my G.I. Joe. But the, the skin on the Visible Man was totally clear. It was clear plastic and exposed the anatomy of, underneath. And, you know, of course, it was a science thing. It was a teaching thing. It was an educational toy, um, but it was still it was still marketed as a toy with this. And you could, you know, you could take it apart and take all the organs and the muscles and see how they work and put it back together. And, and it was, it was mildly entertaining, but also a little unnerving. Somehow that one felt just a little too real to, to play with or to be a toy. I much preferred my GI Joes with their normal skin and the, the scar, the plastic scar on the cheek and, they were tough and, and, you know, you got the camo and you got the, the accessories with it. Um, they were secure. They were simple. That's who I wanted to feel like I was, was more like the GI Joe and less like the visible man. It was vulnerable, the visible man. It was complex. It, um, there wasn't anything that it could hide with that. And see, with this thing about when we get closer to Jesus, it's like the more visible we become. Uh, visible to God always, but, but the awareness that we're visible to God, visible to ourselves and visible to others. And that can be profoundly unnerving. So we're going to look at a text this morning that I think um, we need to keep this in mind as we go. We're going to see that that following Jesus means living consciously of Jesus' presence in every situation that Jesus sees in every situation. And that an essential part of following Jesus is practicing this awareness that God sees us, not in some benign metaphorical way, but in a tangible trust and recognition of the true nature and character of God. So our text is from Mark, Mark 4. It says, on that day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go across to the other side of the lake. So after leaving the crowd, they took him along just as he was in the boat, and other boats were with him. Now a great windstorm developed, and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was nearly swamped, but he was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care that we are about to die? So he got up and rebuked the wind, said to the sea, be quiet, calm down. Then the wind stopped, and it was dead calm. And he said to them, why are you cowardly? Do you still not have faith? They were overwhelmed by fear and said to one another, who is this then? That the wind in the sea, even the wind in the sea obey him. So as we looked at this and we t- talked about teaching team, and it's interesting teaching here this morning, uh, sitting in this chair, this, this is where I sit on Tuesday mornings when we gather by Zoom to talk about the, the scripture. Um, we talked about first about how that this is, a, this is an appropriate response from the disciples in a way. Listen, I don't know if you've ever been in a boat when it feels like it's getting swamped in the middle of a lake or an ocean, but it's not. It's not easy to be calm in that situation. And whether it's in a boat or in any situation where we feel like our very lives are threatened, um, I don't think what God is saying here is, hey, you just need to ignore that. You just need to be chill. Now, in a way, I think this is an appropriate response to the imminent threat of death that they have, is they are scared. That's not, that's not an unnatural or even an unrighteous reaction to this. 
I mean, what else could the disciples have done here in a way? I'm pretty sure that I would have acted the same way. And I think we can all identify with this, no matter what the storm, whether that's a real storm, a tornado, a, a flood, or it's the metaphorical storms, the, the very real storms that all of us are facing now, both individually and as a society, these storms may be um, divorce or disease. It could be the imminent weight of the political turmoil we're in. Um, constant new news of another shooting. The oppression, the injustice, the systemic response to these tragedies, which not only falls short of being adequate, but actually often works to exacerbate the problem rather than correct it. Y'all, we're all in stormy boats of some sort or another. And so we have a lot to learn here. We have to understand is, is faith. Faith is not opposed to fear, but Jesus uses a very specific word here of cowardice here. And this is different from the fear when he says fear God. We should have a cultivated fear of God or righteous fear. Uh, he's calling out something different here in them. And, uh, and we all need to see also that in this crucial moment, stuff is revealed. In those moments, uh, Iris Murdoch said, at the crucial moment of choice, most of the business of choosing is already over. And this is true. What we see is like crisis reveal what is in us. It, it reveals how we've been living in a way that either prepares us to handle the crisis and weather it faithfully or the opposite, which is to turn cowardly. Because I think cowardice is the opposite of faithfulness. Not fear, but cowardice here. Abraham Heschel said, man has to choose between awe and anxiety, between the divine and the demonic, between radical amazement and radical despair. Now, this is, I want to be quick to say here, we're not talking about um, clinical depression or chronic anxiety that comes from certain medical conditions, um, psychological landscape here. Listen, we all deal with anxiety. We all deal with despair. I want to be very clear to say that God is saying, hey, those things are bad. Don't have them. Just work your way out of them. No. Instead, he's saying he's recognizing that those things exist. And I believe Jesus is giving us a way to go through them, not to avoid them, not to do away with them, but to go through them with us. And so if if in a way their response is, um, the fear response is okay, but cowardice is not. Jesus seems to be, the second question I want to ask here is, is Jesus being mean here? Because this rebuke really sounds rough. I mean, these guys thought they were going to die, and now they're getting dressed down by Jesus in this. Is, is Jesus being mean here? I don't think so, but I don't think he's being nice. So there's a, there's a popular misconception that to be a Christian means you have to be nice all the time. And Laura talked about this in our teaching team, This brought this up in our teaching discussion this week. There's a difference between being nice and being good. Jesus is good. Jesus is kind. Jesus is caring. But he's not always nice here with this. There's an, there's an interesting thing when we see this. What is happening, I believe, is whenever we learn something more about God, we learn something about ourselves. When we really commit ourselves to learning about God and God reveals God's self to us, that process also reveals something of ourself to our self. And sometimes the way Jesus sees us or teaches us is profoundly disturbing to our own limited concepts of self. It's unsettling on two levels. One is that when Jesus sees us, we realize that we can't hide. We're, we're less like G.I. Joe, more like the visible man. And that's disturbing to 
even though we long to be seen, we long to be recognized, it's a basic instinct of humanity to want that. At the same time, it's, it can be really scary. It can be very disturbing. It can be very overwhelming. And so on the first level, being seen at that level, known truly for who we are, revealed what we'd like to hide. Man, that's disturbing, but it, it even goes deeper than that. The second way it's disturbing is that Jesus stays with us there. Is that when all that stuff comes out, all that stuff is exposed, we expect condemnation. In a way, we demand it. And Jesus won't do it. And here's where the kindness of Jesus steps in, is Jesus stays with us. He sees us and doesn't turn away in disgust. Jesus accepts us. Jesus recognizes us and treats us ultimately the way that all of us long to be treated with humanity, our, our humanity treated with love, with care, with deference, but also with clarity. What, is, what does this teach us? You know, it's interesting. We talked about how this comes right on the heels of all our parables. Jesus is teaching the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like this. They get in the boat. The storm happens. This is their response. What does this teach us about what we've just learned? And I think Amy brought it up really well. She said the fulcrum of this story is, do you not yet have faith? So Jesus is saying, hey, the kingdom of God is like this. The kingdom of God is like this. And, and our response to those things should be an increase in faith. Yes, it's good to know the story. It's good to have the head knowledge, but it's, faith is this position, this posture towards God that allows God to see us and ourselves to be seen in such a way that draws us closer to God. It's an interesting way to think about faith is it's allowing God to know us. Oftentimes we think of faith as the intentional towards God, and obviously there is a component of that. But I believe faith starts with allowing God to see us, allowing God to know us, being willing to be vulnerable to God seeing us. And so what is that faith that Jesus expects from them? Because that's, that's what he's saying is the answer to their cowardice is faith. Well, first of all, we have to understand that, you know, we're all looking for validation, right? We want to see other people affirm our emotional response. If, if I'm mad, I want other people to be mad. If I'm sad, I want other people to be sad. I want them to affirm this. And God often doesn't do that as the way we want. Sometimes we look to God and want God to, to justify my anger or my despair, my, my want. And, and sometimes God looks at us says, I have something different. You need to be looking at this differently. What we see in the story is Jesus is decentering the disciples and their fear from the story. Ultimately, this isn't about the disciples' fear. This isn't an affirmation of their cowardice or even a, a rebuke in the sense that, the, that that's the problem. The problem here is that they're not seeing Jesus for who Jesus is. Jesus decenters that from the story. Look, the threat was real. Jesus affirms the reality of the threat by calming the storm, but he doesn't do it in a way that affirms their response, their cowardly response here. And I think that's the thing here is that the kind of faith that Jesus is looking for is not some kind of abstract ascent to a doctrine. It's not some kind of um, just different way of thinking about God. No, the faith that he's, he's saying, look at me. Look at me. What, what are you learning about me that if I am able to stay still, even to the point of falling asleep during the storm, what do you need to know about me? And they weren't seeing that. They weren't seeing Jesus. He saw them plenty. They weren't seeing him with this. And, you know, we rarely see this. We rarely see this clear-sighted response to our situation. Oftentimes, you know, whether it's our parents or friends or leaders or teachers, we come in with an anxiety, a despair, a fear, and they 
all they offer is rebuke, but not in the way that Jesus does. It's more a rebuke because it, it, it reflects negatively on them. Right? I've been guilty of this countless times as a parent with something that was a, affecting my child, and I was more concerned about how that affected me. And so I responded out of that way. And God, we need to know God doesn't do that. God is not concerned that, that we're going to make God look bad with our fear, our despair, our anxiety, our depression, whatever it is. We're not, God, God isn't going to go, oh, there they go again. And, and somehow rebuking us because it makes God look bad. And Jesus isn't concerned about one bit about that here. So, so where is the, where's the problem here? What is the thing causing the cowardice? That, that thing that takes fear and the anxiety, but takes it to a sinful level. Because I believe the cowardice here is the sin. Not, not the fear, not the anxiety, not the recognition that they're in a storm. Not even the, you know, the concern about very, their very life. That's not it. It's how they're responding to Jesus here that is the problem. And I think the problem here is they're, they're acting as if Jesus is not who Jesus claims to be. Someone said once that uh, God created people in God's image and people have returned the favor. And, and I find that true in so many different levels that we're constantly projecting our image of self onto God. We, we want this God who will affirm our proclivities and our biases and our prejudices. Anne Lamont once said, um, we can pretty, be pretty sure we've created a God in our own image when that God hates the same people we hate. And I think what the, the disciples were doing here is they were projecting their own fear onto God, expecting Jesus to respond in that way. And when he didn't, they, it, it scared them and they, they started acting out of a cowardly accusatory um, you can't you can't you hear the accusation? Don't you care about us? Like, like there's this accusing in their voice, and they're the root of the problem here is they're responding to Jesus, not as Jesus is, but as the Jesus they want him to be. We see this throughout scripture, right? The people miss it because they expect Jesus, they expect God to hate the same people they hate, scared of the same people, or scared of the same things they're scared of, and do these things. Jesus will have none of it. And so this brings us to our own application, our own understanding of this is where in our lives are we acting as if Jesus is just like us? Scared of the same things, hating the same things, dismissing the same things. Where in our lives are we acting as if Jesus isn't Jesus? as if Jesus may not be even concerned at all, maybe asleep. We're in our response to the, the tragedies that we see unfolding in our society, in our world, maybe in our homes. Where are we responding as if Jesus is just asleep, doesn't care, isn't concerned, doesn't see us? Y'all, that's, that's sin. Not in the moral sense that we're breaking a code, but sin in the true sense that it's blasphemy in a way. It's thinking of God as, as something other than he, God, something other than God truly is. And this is where we need to repent. And the repentance isn't, oh, all of a sudden I'm fine, I don't care. I'm not scared. I'm not anxious. I'm not depressed. I'm not worried. No, it's not that at all. It's that in the midst of those situations, we call upon God. We see God. We understand that God is present. We understand that God is with us in the boat, in the storm. And that we can trust that because God is with us, no matter what happens, we are seen and cared for. We are understood. That's the practice of faith. I believe that's the faith that Jesus is calling the disciples to in the boat. It's the faith that Jesus is calling us to as a church, as Grace Church. 
to allow ourselves to be seen by God, known by God, and to respond appropriately to that with faith. So y'all, I know this has been a little bit different uh, seeing the recording. I'm praying that everyone there stays safe. Let's all listen. We've, we've walked too far through these past couple of years to, to blow it now. Let's, uh, let's really be safe. The numbers are rising. They're still okay, but they are rising. Um, let's take care of one another. Let's not respond with cowardice, but with faith as we look forward to, uh, to all things being restored. Thanks, y'all. Miss y'all. Grace and peace. Thank you for listening to Grace Church of Northwest Arkansas podcast. You can find more about us online at gracechurchmwa.org. Grace and peace.